James Webb Space Telescope shows Jupiter in a new light. NASA's latest space telescope reveals stunning details in the gas giant's cloud tops, aurorae, and faint rings. NASA's James Webb Telescope has taken new images of Jupiter's moons, rings and more. A new image of Jupiter taken from NASA's Webb Telescope and released a show. NASA has captured new telescopic images of Jupiter that show auroras, altitude levels and cloud covers. Webb will study every phase in the history of our universe, ranging from the first luminous glows after the Big Bang, to the formation of solar systems capable of supporting life on planets like Earth, to the evolution of our own solar system. It will build on the Hubble Space Telescope's discoveries. When the James Webb Space Telescope JWST, blasted off from French Guiana on Christmas Day 2021, astronomers anticipated it would deliver breathtaking images of distant galaxies and star-forming regions, as well as analyze the chemical makeups of exoplanet atmospheres. And NASA's flagship space telescope has not disappointed. JWST has already captured images of galaxies so far from Earth that cosmic expansion has shifted their light well into the infrared part of the spectrum, which the telescope is built to detect. And the observatory's near-infrared spectrograph, NERSPEC, has even discovered carbon dioxide in the atmosphere of exoplanet WASP-39b, the first definitive detection of this gas in a planet beyond our solar system. But JWST has set its sights closer to home, too. On July 27, astronomers targeted Jupiter with the telescope's powerful infrared eyes. The resulting images reveal a planet both familiar and exotic. A three-filter image of Jupiter is more colorful, it shows the auroras and the light reflected by lower clouds and upper hazes in reddish hues. Hazes swirling around the poles are shown in yellow and greens. The light reflected by Jupiter's primary cloud cover is depicted in shades of blue that are dappled with bright spots. The great red spot is pinkish white. JWST's wide field view, created using two infrared filters, shows two of Jupiter's dozens of moons, Amalthea and Adastri, as points of light to the left of the planet. Adastri seems to be embedded in Jupiter's ring system, which looks brighter in infrared than it does in visible light. Jupiter's equatorial zone and great red spots stand out in this infrared image from the James Webb Space Telescope because their high-altitude hazes reflect sunlight well. The bright auroral emissions are near the giant planet's north and south pole. James Webb's cameras can look deep into space and far into the past. Webb has the capacity to look 13.6 billion light-years distant, which will be the farthest we've ever seen into space. The JWST was designed to use a broad range of infrared light, and this is a key reason the JWST can see further back in time than Hubble. Galaxies emit a range of wavelengths on the electromagnetic spectrum, from gamma rays to radio waves, and everything in between. JWST's near-infrared camera, NIRCAM, captured two images of our solar system's largest planet. In the striking close-up directly above, taken through three different filters, Jupiter displays numerous cloud bands, as well as storms and auroral emissions. The equatorial zone spans the planet's girth and looks bright white because its high-altitude hazes reflect lots of sunlight. For the same reason, the massive great red spot in Jupiter's southern hemisphere shows up as a bright oval. The brightness here indicates high altitude, so the great red spot has high altitude hazes, as does the equatorial region. The numerous bright white spots and streaks are likely very high altitude cloud tops of condensed convective storms. Jupiter's massive auroral ovals appear as reddish glows near the giant's north and south poles. Hubble Space Telescope images show NGC 1365 as a double-barred spiral galaxy roughly twice the size of the Milky Way some 56 million light-years away in Fornax. Webb's mid-infrared view offers an entirely different perspective on the galaxy, since we're seeing the light from warmly glowing dust, not newborn stars. 
Gravitational lensing occurs when closer objects act like a magnifying glass for distant objects. Gravity essentially warps and magnifies the light of distant background galaxies. When light passes close to massive objects, it follows a curve around that object. The spectacular wide field view of Jupiter below combines images through two infrared filters. The Jovian clouds and aurorae still stand out, but many more details appear in this composite photo. The power of JWST is exemplified by its ability to capture Jupiter's faint and dusty rings in the same image as the bright planet itself, which shines one million times brighter than the rings. Jupiter's magnificent cloud tops are but one highlight in this wide field image, which includes the planet's dusty ring system as well as the moons Amalthea and Adrastea. The colors in these images don't match what the human eye would see when observing Jupiter. After all, our vision does not pick up infrared radiation. The $10 billion NASA telescope, which was launched last Christmas with support from ESA and the Canadian Space Agency, is just getting started on an observational campaign that should last at least five years, and almost certainly much longer. JWST has already produced what's considered the deepest infrared view of the universe captured to date, plus fresh looks at an exoplanet, a planetary nebula, a galaxy cluster, a star-forming region and the colorful Cartwheel galaxy. JWST scientists have high hopes for what the next-gen space telescope can teach them about the Jovian system. Researchers plan to analyze the world's cloud layers, composition, temperature, winds, and auroral activity. Astronomers also wish to better understand the structure of Jupiter's ring system, providing insight into where it originates and how it will evolve. And finally, planetary scientists expect to create maps of the surface and atmosphere of both the volcanically active moon Io and the icy moon Ganymede. These satellite observations will also search for plumes of volcanic gases, Io, and water vapor, Ganymede. It's an ambitious undertaking, but if JWST's initial observations prove anything, it's that the telescope should be up to the task. Webb launched on December 25, 2021, and its first images and data were released on July 12, 2022.